Peers, today in this video I will be discussing regarding the JVM internals that is the Java virtual machine. So this is the heart of the Java program means to run any application in Java you need to first have the JVM which is installed in your operating system whether it be Windows or Linux or Mac operating system. So let us see what are these internal structures and what does this JVM actually comprised of. So first of all you have a dot class file from the dot java file. Now this dot class file is loaded into the class loader subsystem. Now this class loader subsystem is required for verification of the dot class file that is the byte code whether all the instructions are being properly converted from dot jar file to the dot class file. Next is the java api that is the class loader subsystem gives its output to the java api class files. Now this api level that is the application programming interfaces could be dot lang or dot util or io or the awt that is the abstract windowing toolkit. Now moving to the runtime data areas this class loader subsystem is divided into five main sections. These are the method area, the heap, java stacks, pc registers that is the program counter, the native method stacks. So let's start with the method area. Method area is nothing but it is a logical part of this heap. Now this method area is of MB or GB or it may be in sometimes can be in kilobytes also. Now this method area comprises of the various code of the classes, the variables, the uh, data, the methods or any other code related data are stored in this method areas. And this method area is stored per JVM means for per JVM you have one method area and similarly for heap for heap also it is per JVM means per JVM you have one heap memory. Moving on to next component that is the heap. Heap is used for storing and creating the data which is used for running the Java application. Now any of the data is uh, by default mentioned by uh, MB or GB and it can vary. Now this heap is used for uh, contiguous allocation of the data in the memory means uh, any time when you create or instantiate any object of the main class by using the new operator heap will be allocated some memory and from the heap which all uh, objects are referenced it will be then moving to the survivor space and the hidden space I will talk about these things in the future videos. Now this heap space is by default given a value of 1 GB that is 1024 bytes. Next is the Java stacks method. Java stacks is the component in which the Java methods are residing. So Java stack uh, is given like this means it consists of the frames that is it stores data in form of the frame numbers that is frame 1, frame 2, frame 3. Like for example now when you inspect each of this frame you can see a return value, a local variable, an operand stack and current class constant pool reference. Now what is this? I will explain in detail. Return value is the return value of the method. For example if it is void something or void main it will uh, return nothing so this return value will provide nothing and whether it if uh, as a string or a boolean or any other integer or float type it will return some value so those values are stored in the return value next is a local variable local variable stores the variables which are uh, globally or locally declared inside the java program now this local variables can be A or B or something like XYZ variable which is used in the program for instantiating and for accessing and calling other methods. Now these local variables are pushed onto the uh, stack and are popped after the completion of the method execution. 
next is the operand stack operand stack is the value which is assigned to the variable which are stored in the local variables now if for example if there is a declaration and initialization like int a is equal to 20 then the value of a that is 20 will be stored in the operand stack and the variable a will be stored in the local variables means all the local variables will be stored in this column and the values assigned to those will be stored in the operand stack next is the current class constant pool reference it is the reference to some other class which is called by the main class or the parent class to its children class so this is the jvm stack next is the program counter registers that is the pc registers so it gives the address of the next instruction to be executed or the sequential execution of the program that's how it maintains the flow of the program that's from main it will call some other method that is x method from x method it will call y method and eventually it will go to the z method so those address is or the flow is maintained by using the PC registers. Now this registers you can see in the architecture of 8051 as well as some other microprocessors. So the same concept is followed in JVM also. It, the program execution or the program flow is basically maintained by the PC registers. And this address of the next instruction is stored in the hexadecimal format. So moving on to the next component that is the native method stacks. This native method stacks and the Java stacks perform the same operation. But the native method stacks is used for a printing any of the assembly level uh, or the machine level in fact. The machine level uh, outputs to be printed are classified under the native method stacks. So this completes the runtime data area. Next comes the execution engine. So after all these components have been loaded, next you have to execute. So for that execution, you need to have an interpreter and a well-known interpreter is the JVM as well as the JIT compiler. JIT compiler is the just-in-time compiler which will execute any of the application in less than a fraction of a second and hence for high performance and high availability of the Java application, this JIT compiler comes into picture. Next is the operating system. Linking it with the operating system gives the architectural uh, neutrality or the portability which is uh, being uh, taught in the previous videos. Uh, so OS can be any of the OS that is the Windows or Linux or the Mac OS. So this is the overall architecture of the JVM in detail. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching this video.